In this video, we're going to build a multi-step form with React, which is going to use uncontrolled components. Here's a demo of what we'll be building. The form shows the current step and the total number of steps. I can't proceed to the next step without filling all of the required fields. When I reach the last step and submit the form, the submit handler function just walks all of the data from all steps to the console. Here's the project structure. I have a main JSX file, which is the application entry point and an app component. I have a providers folder with a single provider, the multi-step model, and a folder with all of my components. I have three form steps in there, user details, personal info, and license agreements. The multi-step form component and form step components are used to build the actual multi-step form. Let's go to the application entry point, main.jsx. This file is very standard. It only imports the index.css file and renders the app component. The app component wraps everything in the multi-step model provider. Then it renders a multi-step form and it passes the steps as an array in the steps prop. It also passes the submit handler through the submit prop. The submit handler currently just console walks all of the data received from the multi-step form. In this submit function, you will usually make an HTTP request to submit the form data to the server. Let's now take a look at the model provider. The model provider creates a context and the provider component handles all of the form data. This provider stores the entire form model, its data and state. We have a few state variables first. The steps, which is an array of React components where each component should contain HTML inputs, current step, that is the index of the active form step, data, which stores the form data, and submit handler, which is a function that is called when the form is submit. We have two methods after that, is first step and is last step. They're both just shortcuts for checking if current step is equal to zero or if it's equal to the length of steps minus one. This logic will be used multiple times, so it's useful to have reusable methods for it. Pref step decrements the current step if it isn't the first step. Next step is similar. Simply, it increments the current step if it's not the last step. Next is the submit function. The architecture will work like this. Each step will be a separate HTML form. When each form submits, it will call this submit function. This function aggregates the data coming from the form with data from the other steps. Then, if this is the last step, it calls the submit handler with form data from all steps. As I mentioned, the submit function is internal and it's used by the forms of all steps, while the submit handler function is external. It's set for all multi-step form instances and it will be called only after the last step is submit. The submit handler function will be set by the user of this API so that the multi-step form component and this provider can be reused to build many multi-step forms. I aggregate these state variables and methods to one model object and the context provider passes it to all consumers as its value. Finally, I have a custom hook called useMultiStepModel, which is just a shortcut for useContext. Let's go to the multi-step form component next. It uses multiple values from the model using the custom hook. It has two side effects. The first one calls the setSteps method from the model. It will pass the steps from the component props to the model. This will happen when the setSteps function is available from the model and when the steps prop changes. The second effect sets the submit handler of the model to the one provided by the props. The component iterates through all the steps and returns a form step component for each of them, which wraps the step, a component with HTML inputs. We also pass is hidden to the form step, which is true if the step is not the current one. Now remember that step here means just a React component with some HTML inputs. Let's check my steps for clarity. This is my user detail step. Notice that I just have HTML input fields with some validation. In this case, they are just required. They also have a name. As I'll be using the uncontrolled inputs approach, the names are important as they'll be used to retrieve the data. The other two steps are almost identical. 
I have personal info, which is a bunch of text fields that are required, and legal agreements, which is just two required checkbox fields. Let's now see the code for the form step component, which wraps these steps. The form step component uses the model. It wraps the form input fields we pass to it with a form HTML element. Notice that this element has the hidden HTML attribute, which depends on the is hidden prop which we pass to the form step component. This means that the form steps that are not active will be hidden. We also have a div tag showing the current step and the number of steps left. After that are the children, which is the component with input fields. Last are the previous and next buttons. The previous button is only shown if this is not the first step, and on click it calls the model pref step method. The next button is always shown, but if this is the last step, it has the submit label instead of next. When the form is submit, the handler first prevents the default behavior, which is to refresh the page. Then it creates a new form data object from the form element. This will store all of the named input field values in this form data object. After that, we call the model submit function and we pass the form values to it using the object from entries method, which converts the form data to a simple object. Lastly, we call next step to go forward if this is not the last step. If you remember the implementation in the provider, this method does nothing if this is the last step. Let's see how this comes together again. We instantiate a new multi-step component and pass the steps and submit handler to it. This renders the multi-step form with HTML validation on each step. When we reach the last step and submit the form, the submit handler is called with the aggregated data from all steps. This wraps today's video. A GitHub repository with all of the code is linked in the video description. Don't forget to subscribe for more project videos and courses like this one. Take care.